to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. Today, sponsored once again, Herman Marshall Whiskey, Dallas County's first distillery handcrafted, award winning small batch whiskey, patiently aged in new white oak barrels in the great state of Texas, built from the grain up just like good whiskey and better French should be. They're building a brand new facility out in Wiley this spring. You guys get a chance to check it out. They've got a rye, a bourbon, and a blend, and they also have a single malt. So, if you guys get a chance to check it out, they like said this spring. They're in, moving in right now, so they're, we're looking forward to it. And also by Early Bird CBD Gummies. Go to earlybirdcbd.com. Use the code BIGHEADPOD to get 20% off your first order. They ship the same day if it's before 3, 3 p.m., and this stuff helps me to sleep at night. So that and my achy joints because I'm so old from playing. I never thought about my body when I was 20 years old. I just went and played and never thought anything else out about it. So this stuff helps me. It helps you sleep well, nice, easy sleep, wake up refreshed in the morning. So go ahead and check them out as well. So today's guest is one of the tallest players to ever play in Major League Baseball. He is a career, as I just looked, a 167 hitter. and But that's not what he is known for. But So teammate of mine, that's, but that's played with him for hit. a while, Mr. Cameron Love. Cam, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. I'm just, you know, soaking up that one hit that I got in the big leagues. I, I mean, it was, I, I stepped in the bucket, tried to hit it to the left and, and shot right down the first base line. That's how it works, right? That's the old, uh, the, the old Homer Simpson. You just swing and hope it goes somewhere. But, but you know, as, as pitchers, especially when you're getting ready for interleague, you guys were so juiced about batting practice and trying to do stuff. Now, gone are those days now, right? Pitchers aren't swinging anymore. They don't make athletes, right? You know, pitchers always brag. We're athletes, right? So you were oh, six, yeah. six. Best athlete on the field, clearly. Exactly. But gone are those days, batting practice, when you guys knew we were going interleague. And, and it was fun to go out there and watch you guys go at it. So some could do it, some couldn't. But it was fun. So, um, and I, you know, who knows, we'll ever get back to pitchers hitting again. I, I personally liked it because some could. Some guys could actually swing the bat pretty well. And yeah, then, man. I mean, I played with some good hitting pitchers. Uh, Gallardo and um, I mean that's uh, Granky. Those guys could swing it. Yeah, Madison Bumgarner. He could swing the bat. Bumgarner. As well. Yeah, yeah. Those guys could swing. But gone are those days. Yeah. So yep. and you know it's 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 a shame that 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 part of the game is is gone because we grew up you know playing watching National League baseball and that's what you so. Anyway, moving on from from our career batting stuff. So Cam, what have you been up to these days? It's been a while, man, since I've seen you. I know you're out in Scottsdale and. I've been reading that you've taken over for the APBPA. EPA. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I took over as the president for the Association of Professional Ball Players of America. Um, what was it? Officially, I think December 30th of last year. And, uh, man, we've been doing some really exciting things with the association. Uh, we had a little bit of a gap where there was. Um, uh, a little bit of trouble going on and uh, we're clearing that up um, and we got some really awesome things coming we we actually just signed up all of our members are have uh, the cost plus drugs program that mark cuban's got um, we made that available for all of our our uh, members and so guys can get you know the pharmaceuticals that they need and um, eli they're doing a deal with eli Lilly here pretty soon so they'll be get uh, be getting discounted um insulin and uh putting together networking groups and and chapters local chapters and camps and uh just all kinds of great support for the guys how did you even become you know present did you put yourself in for the nomination or, or you know explain to the guy some the people that are listening i know we dick beverage was the president for forever right as long as i yeah. was you know was coming up was with dick was so how did you even transition into becoming the president of this funny story um <clears throat> so i got brought on to the board uh see, i guess late 2019 and uh, a few months before the shutdown um we were doing some stuff in my clinic that was helping the guys i use a, a very specific type of microcurrent that speeds up healing and can help take care of old injuries as well as speed up uh you know uh, new injury healing and and uh, just great for the cells so um they brought me on the board because i was helping out a bunch of the older guys and uh having a great time doing it just having great great success and then um we had something happen with uh bobby 
Grich and the the uh, Jennifer Madison, the other president that uh, that stepped in. Um, I don't want to go into it too much, but uh, basically, um, this lady moved herself uh, from a Craigslist hire. Uh, she literally answered a, uh, a you know <clears throat> a post on Craigslist. They hired her to do some stuff around the office. Um, she basically got one guy to go away, uh, a little bit of extortion, and then uh, she uh, got another guy to go away, and then we caught on and we've caught her um caught her in some fraud basically um we got the ag involved the attorney general uh mark burnovich here in arizona and um they found enough fraud and basically determined that she's not the uh the rightful president of this association they descended swat onto her uh property <laughs> and uh they took back all of our stuff so she had stuff that was, I mean, th these are American relics, man. These are almost a hundred years old. Some of the, some of these things that the association had, and uh, she was just keeping it on her property in this big storage bin, wouldn't give it back to us. So uh, yeah, they, they descended SWAT, neutralized her dogs, put her in the back of the squad car and, uh, and took our stuff back. And, um, and now she's, now she's still out there kind of kind of kind of the crazy lady on the street screaming at the buildings um she still thinks that uh she's president and it's kind of uh, it's kind of sad to be quite honest but uh but now we've got the the association in a great place and we're doing some really awesome stuff and uh building it back and so you know, stay tuned because we got some really great stuff coming from for all the all the members. And this consider this is minor league and major league players, correct? As to how this is set up for how it's run, it is actually um, even independent league guys are are eligible. Anybody that signed a professional baseball contract in America is uh, eligible to be a member of ours. So, literally since 1924. Um, I'd say probably somewhere around 98 to 99 percent of minor league and major league guys have been a member of this association, whether they know it or not. Uh, and um, but also the uh, the ind independent league guys. Yeah, so I remember see, you know seeing Dick Beveridge in spring training or during the season. You know he was the one that how and this was created for what purpose? I know we've you know they have you know some guys that we've helped out in the minor leagues throughout with it. How is this how is this helping? you know, both sides of it. How was it even created or what, how was it started? Yeah. So, uh, this was created back in 1924 by, uh, the honorable judge Landis first commissioner of, of major league baseball, as well as, uh, I believe it was eight or nine other guys. And it was formed at a little restaurant called Dinty Moore's in Los Angeles. And I think it was October 9th, 1924. And it was formed because uh, these guys noticed that a, a bunch of legends, uh, including Satchel Paige, um, they were getting done with their with their careers and they were hurting. You know, they these guys were amazing ball players, and they were they were down and out at the end of their career, either physically hurting or or monetarily or medically or. And th they just realized that a bunch of our brothers needed a hand and uh, needed a leg up, so. They formed this this uh, association, and uh, Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Lou Gehrig, they were our original ambassadors, and um, they they made it basically to to help guys like Sac Satchel Page, who was uh, was in need, and uh, to give them a hand and and lift them up and get them back on their feet. And uh, so, still now, ninety eight years later, we're still helping guys, and uh, and we're we're working on bringing a whole lot more than just helping a guy when he needs a handout. You know, I'd, I'd rather teach a man to fish than, than give him a fish. Um, cause you, you get him to eat for life if you teach him to fish. So we're, we're really focusing on that. Um, you know, getting ahead of the problem, uh, with, uh, monetary programs, uh, some debt relief, some credit, credit relief, um, you know, just areas where guys, may not have had the support, you know, either growing up or from their agents or um, whatever the case is, we want to be there for them for what they need and uh, to help guide them so that, you know, so that they don't wind up in a bad position post-career. Yeah. How many members are there? Do you know? 
off the top of historically your head. historically we've had over a hundred thousand members um right now in our database we're probably somewhere right around forty thousand so you're still trying to find guys to that are part yeah. of it. and how it's set because i remember it was it the were we in the minor leagues when you started you 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 pay into it right almost like as your membership and then is it continually go or is it one is it just a one time that fee or how how does that work uh yeah so uh, in spring training every year we would come in and unfortunately we haven't been able to go into the clubhouses in the last few years because of obvious reasons you know covid and um some of these i talked to mark mclemore the other day and, and he was like yeah they didn't even let me back into the clubhouse yet they still got all the COVID protocols going on, but um, so you know, it, historically we'd come into the clubhouse and and we'd have a sheet and and basically everybody you know would sign their name saying that uh, out of their first check they donate the hundred and fifty dollars for you know for that year's membership. Uh, now some guys will sign and say just you know give me the, the lifetime membership, <clears throat> which is uh, right around a thousand dollars and. Um, so yeah, the guys would just sign up, give the give the money, and and we get our donations that way. And but we're we're having to be a little bit more entrepreneurial, and uh, you know just just coming up with some some other ways to produce revenue and uh, to get in front of the guys because we can't be in the clubhouses right now. Do you deal with um, with Jeff Hickson through our uh, the Major League Players Alumni Association? Do you through do that or through the the bat is bat still around the baseball assistance team is that still yep they're still around yep, as well that's, that's still around yep um they you know that they, they only deal with the big leaguers so uh if there's any minor leaguers or, or any guys that, that need help they're they're not really involved um but uh i think you know as this as we grow this as we get this back on its feet um we should have some kind of working relationship with bat that's what i'd really like to see happen um there's another there's another company called uh, More Than Baseball, and they're more so uh, focused only on minor league and independent league guys. And <clears throat> I'd like I'd love to see like the trifecta of, of that, APBPA and More Than Baseball, all working together. You know, because there's certain guys that that Bat's going to want to help and that Bat can help, and then there's cer certain guys that we can help that maybe come to Bat and they can toss them over to us and we can help them. And, and vice versa um and then you know same thing with with more than baseball if, if we can get all three of them working together um i think that's going to be really powerful and we'll be able to help a whole lot more guys yeah because we've had we had a teammate that was actually helped right <laughs> uh, through the with through, uh, was it through that or was it through bat it was a minor league player that was dealing with some cancer issues right that we played with uh, yeah jason hart right remember jason had, right. was dealing with yeah. some issues and i think was it was it uh was it the ap B, pa or was I, that through I, what was that through i just remembered you know them trying to you know doing something to help raise the money to help him with with that because he was i think we was in double a at the time yeah yeah um i believe it was the apvpa that was a little bit before i was really involved you know i was i was donating to it but i was still playing at that point uh but i definitely remember when jason was going through that and, and he got the help that he needed yeah and that's that's the thing people don't you know realize some of these guys that never get to you know the the major league level of how this can help help them out like you talked about the mental side and especially physically what what guys go through you know it's you know some guys are just just dealing with injury and you know then they have the yeah. other things you know cancer type stuff comes around where you know these these illnesses terminal stuff that they just you know there's nothing they can do um and it, that's the beauty part of 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 us of the baseball side of it so is does the union the major league players the union is that was it created around the same time as as uh the abppa or was it was that created later on i wasn't sure exactly when the union was started with mlb you know what i'm actually not exactly sure what the uh what the date that the union was formed but i know it was after the apbpa okay so they built that and then trying to i was wondering if they would try and you know c combine combine through that because it's it's coaches as well right that are that are a, that a part yeah. of it coaches uh scouts even um umpires um I believe even uh, if you're, you know, clubhouse manager will help you as well. And um, yeah, man, it, it spans kind of, kind of the whole professional baseball gauntlet. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was, I just remember, you know, like you said the the help that we were able to create and just seeing, seeing guys, what they go through and, you know, and how, uh, you know, this stuff affects, affects us. Cause you know, I mean, we've played with thousands of guys, right. That never made it out of a ball and, 
um, yep. you know, injuries and, and, and everything else. And it's, it's, it's great that, that this is created. And hopefully, you know, you're in Arizona now being able to see, see these teams to be able to, to, to help out. I mean, how, I mean, are you guys daily you getting phone calls from, from players, just finding guys, or, or are you just hoping that, you know, that somebody will just pass along names for you to be able to get out to it? Yeah, we have guys reach out through uh, Facebook and, and send us emails and, and uh, you know, snail mail as well. And uh, so we, we, you know, have guys come to us through that, through those outlets. And, um, we're going to be, ha we're going to have a better uh, social media outreach here coming pretty soon. And um, hopefully we'll have some people like really answering phones and being there for, uh, you know, for emergency hotline and, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, guys just reach out and um, you know, we're, we're every month we're, we're working on, you know, getting more and more funding so we can help more and more guys you guys do charity events or you know the fundraiser you were talking about the memorabilia that's that's collected is this you know this stuff just donated through through the years from players is it purchased or how you know how you were talking about some really old stuff that was that was taken that you guys were finally back in possession of yeah here you know what actually let me uh let me pull out a couple of things here these are these are just really cool man um so here's an example of here's Lou Gehrig's dues card. And this basically says that he paid $10 starting in 1927 uh, to be a member. And it shows he's paid his dues all the way through, uh, was this 38 on this card? And then, I mean, we got, we got Mickey Mantle. Uh, I don't know how well you can see these names. I guess you just kind of have to <laughs> we trust you with them. Take, yeah. take, take my word for it. But <laughs> there's Satchel Page here. I'll, I'll zoom in on that yeah. one. This... And I, I mean, I got Jackie Robinson and, and Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron. I mean, it's just amazing the history in this in this association. And uh, I'm you know a bunch of balls and got the Ch Chuck Stevens Award and. Uh, all, all kinds of other memorabilia and stuff, but uh, some of it's really, really cool. I mean, it's pieces of Americana, really. Do you guys share with with uh, the Hall of Fame any of this stuff? Do you got, you know, they they put different stuff out. They come, you know, certify everything, make sure. How's that work? Do you, I mean, is there any kind of relationship there? So we're working on that. Yeah, we were we were working on getting a relationship with the uh, Hall of Fame. This some of this stuff definitely belongs in in Cooperstown. So um, we are working on on both being able to sell hall of fame gear in our, in our uh, online store and uh, doing, you know, collaborative hall of fame, APBPA gear. And then, um, yeah, we're working on getting some stuff like this, uh, like the, the Babe Ruth dues card and everything put into uh, Cooperstown. So people can buy this stuff from me. I wasn't, I was not aware. I thought it was memorabilia that you guys were, were just keeping as far as nostalgia purposes or trading in, but this stuff is available for people to purchase if they want to. Uh, those dues cards. No, those are, those are, you know, little pieces of history. So we're not going to be selling those. What we are going to be doing though, is actually uh, making copies of them and uh, raffling them off. And cause they're, they're just cool pieces to have on your wall and uh doing some cool stuff like that but we're going to keep the originals so you have guys that i mean players will players donate stuff as well throughout you know throughout the year or whatnot as far as just saying hey you know here's you know like mike trout or somebody here here's a jersey or whatnot that you guys can go auction off type of stuff or is it just you guys having to ask for it? are you even allowed to ask for it i we, guess yeah we're allowed to ask for it um although we haven't much uh, in, in the in the recent uh, future or recent past, I should say, um, we will get into that in the, in the near future. But uh, we kind of our focus has really been building this thing back, uh, you know, from a from a business level and and getting everything right. Our taxes weren't filed for like four years. Um, the the previous uh, administration did not file our taxes yeah uh so stuff like that man we've, we've really you know we've had to really go to the ground level and the nuts and bolts and, and make sure that everything's put together properly again so that we're not starting from a bad point and uh so we have really had to go to the bedrock of this thing and make sure that we're you know we're operating um 
correctly and uh, within within our bounds. And you know, there's there's a lot of little things that you got to do and, and and things that you can't do and can't say and uh, when you're dealing with a nonprofit 501c. So I'm learning all of that as uh, as the president. You know, um, it's definitely been a learning experience for me. But uh, we've got a phenomenal board. Uh, we've got you know some great big leaguers on the board. Uh, we've got some other guys that have uh, some amazing experience in the financial world, uh, guys that have managed, you know, billions of dollars in, for Smith Barney and, and um, uh, Chase and uh, just other guys, you know, with, with a skill set that are going to really help push this thing forward. So we got a great team and uh, we're just excited about what we're going to be able to bring in this next year because we've got the 99th anniversary coming up next year and then we're preparing for the 100th year you know our century mark uh in 2024 so you got big stuff planned some some got big stuff some golf stuff we get some some charity stuff going um you yeah have different ambassadors around the country that are you know that are a part of the board are they in different cities or how how is the board even set up yeah we got a couple of guys out here in scottsdale uh manny and we actually just brought on shay hillenbrand uh so shay's going to be joining the board He's got an awesome podcast, and his podcast is all about, you know, uh, lifting people up and, and getting people right in their heart and their soul and helping guys, you know, post-career and, and that transition and, and the PTSD that can go with that and the, the loneliness. And the, so he's he's got a phenomenal podcast, phenomenal message that just really matches ours. So we're just – we brought him on the board. Um, we got Kevin Simmons in Dallas. We got Nick Corso in um, – in uh, Westlake Village, California, we've got Dr. Aaron Shannon in St. Louis, uh, Steve Bumbry in Baltimore, um, Gerald Smiley in Seattle. So we kind of got guys sprinkled all over the country right now of helping out. So you get a chance to guys travel. and gal, yeah, yeah, guys and girls helping out and, and and traveling around. I mean, so you know, getting in into this this side of what made you get into this you know this the association itself was it just one of the hey this is i want to help out i mean because you know we always talk about i had shay on here talking you know about what he's been through i had uh, spezio has mm -hmm. been on uh ellis valentine talking about you know the stuff the mental stuff that these guys deal with leaving baseball you know they don't like, people don't understand how far this goes just just behind baseball right i mean it's yeah. i mean we have only so many 20,000 players that play at the major league level and that's not including the minor league i don't know what the numbers would be total but that the mental side of it, what's going on? Some people that you know, we don't even know if, where they are anymore, right? Some do, some don't. So I mean, what made you go? This is what I want to do. I want to help out as much as much as I can. You know, I've always had a passion for helping. Um, when I was playing, I always tried to be involved with you know, going to the hospitals and and seeing the kids and um, involved with a couple of, the, of other programs. Um, a place called Jonathan's Place in, in Dallas and. So I just, I always had a heart to help. And um, to be honest, I, I found these machines. Um, 2010, I had a really bad injury. I was, I think, uh, well, 2007 is when I sustained the injury. You and I were playing together and I uh, hurt my back really bad and, and dealt with it for a couple of years, avoid, trying to avoid the surgery that doctors said I needed. So anyways, I found this technology. It saved my career. Um, got another seven years of ball out of my out of my body when i thought i was going to have back surgery and, and have it be all over um so i got into this and, and found that the healing aspect of it was just incredible um i was having success with people that uh went to mayo and mayo couldn't help them or um thought that they were going to have to have surgery multiple doctors telling them they need surgery and in a series of you know non-invasive sessions three four five treatments um they were walking around, no pain, didn't need surgery. Doctors couldn't believe it. So <clears throat> I got, I, do, I dove into it even more and um, turned it into my profession post baseball. Uh, I felt like everybody needs to know about this stuff. Hardly anybody does. And uh, <clears throat> so my brother and I set up a, a clinic out here in Scottsdale. And we were, you know, again, treating the guys and uh, having great success. And so through that, I was asked to be uh, to ask to come on the board, and because uh, I was already donating a number of treatments and sessions to to some of these guys, and um, I thought, you know, what a, what a great way to you know still be involved with baseball and, and help out. And so um, that's kind of how I got involved, and then um, 
being just kind of being on the board and watching all this go down with uh, the previous administration, um, we kind of we the the board was whittled down to myself and then really one other guy and that's Kevin Simmons and Kevin did a whole lot of digging into uh, and, and finding all this fraud and, and finding what she was doing wrong and so we kind of had to start from right there and um, we started bringing on other people vetting them and uh, you know looking for different skill sets and, and just looking for people that you know knew baseball wanted to help. And, um, so now we've, you know, put together this great board, but it's been, it's been a little bit of a wild ride. That's for sure. How's your back now? Great. It's amazing, man. Um, I still pitch. I'm still throwing 90 actually. I, uh, <laughs> I went out and played against the uh, 18 and over men's league here and, uh, still, you know, still got, still got a little bit in the tank. It hurts afterwards. Don't get me wrong. It hurts. But <laughs> the old turbo sinker, those kids haven't seen anything like that for, from a guy your size, you know, being no, I, I, they, a couple of them fouled it off their foot and they didn't, they weren't too happy about that. And that, you know, that it's brought back this warm and fuzzy side, you know, oh, yeah. feeling inside those are it. not yeah. fun pitches to, to hit the old turbo sinkers. Cause that's usually where it ends up either off your foot or, or the back to you off the, off the, off the knob of your bat. Cause it's, it's powering through there. So it's, um, and think about it. You said, you know, you're, being that tall and, and pitching and what your your body goes through. I had Mike Adams on here early, a couple in, back in the early uh, days doing the show, and he was talking about he, he's a big guy as well. And what you guys deal with as far as as far as the leverage and everything else. I mean, it's it's not it's not big levers, fun. yeah, and it's back yeah. issues and and and, le and and legs and hips and everything else. And it's and that's amazing though for you know to be able to like you said you thought your career was done and then being able to go through and deal with this and being able to play and still play. I mean, heck, if I tried to throw a ball now, my arm would fall off. If I tried to really step into it, I can play catch, I but I can't throw it very far. I tell you what, I, I took about three or four years off of when I retired, uh, came home from Japan or, uh, Mexico, 2017. I played in Cancun for my last uh, pro year, came home and just shut her down. I didn't throw, I didn't pick up a baseball for literally like three years. And then uh, Manny Parra, my, my good buddy, he was like, hey, man, come out and play some catch with me. I need someone to play catch with. I'm getting ready because he was still playing in, in Mexico, too. And uh, so I got out there and I'm a, I, I couldn't throw it 45 feet. I mean, it was tighter than a drum. I kept going. Took me about three weeks and to where I, it didn't hurt every single throw. And about a month into it, I was out about 200 feet long toss. And I was like, oh. I can do this without, you know, killing me again. So that was cool. And, uh, got back on the bump and, um, yeah, now, now it only hurts a little. Yeah. You should, you know, the men's league, I know that, I know that's starting to be big. I know it's big here. They've got some men's leagues here. Jeff Fry's playing in one. He's 55 he? years old. Yeah. They're playing here. They play here on nice. Wednesday nights. I mean, it's apparently it's pretty big. These yeah. guys are playing these men's leagues. Somebody had talked about creating one at, at one point. I think, uh, Drees and Kenny Rogers, they were they were talking about doing something, and I said, "There's no way I'm going to get out there and play." Because some of the guys do. I think Oliver, Darren Oliver gets oh, out yeah. and plays. Darren Oliver gets out there and play. I heard Kinsler was out there in a in a game one of the uh, I don't know about six months ago. Yeah, that's just just there's just no way a softball and golf, but you know you, some you know some guys' bodies are falling apart. Some aren't. It's just a matter of, and that's what I've realized. I've I've learned my limitation of what I can do. Right there's. Then you got to know yourself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just like what, when we were doing the softball game, right? It's one of those where you just just take your sweet time. You take a few a few whacks, but it's it's like a hangover now. Take four or five days before you feel better, right? You don't <laughs> right. And we never yeah, thought about it when we were that when we were playing, right? About what was going to feel like our bodies and everything else. So this technology that you got that you're using is it, and you're and you're right there too. You're in the hotbed. You're able to actually show these guys. You know, being in Scottsdale, I mean, the amount of guys, athletes, or baseball players that are there, even other athletes come in, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For just, sure. Just, um, we, we deal with a lot of athletes. Uh, it's it's great, man. You know, the, this stuff is actually uh, it's safe enough for little babies. We, we're actually at the largest senior living center here in Arizona called Glencroft as well, um, helping out the old folks. And uh, so, yeah, we, we see all ages, sizes. Uh, we say we have solutions, you know, for the super sick as well as the super healthy and, uh, you know, everything in between. Is it anywhere else? Is there any other clinics around, you know, where we are in Dallas or on the East Coast or anything where guys can go? Or is it just something that's just starting there? 
So we're just starting here. Um, there are these machines sprinkled around kind of, you know, up and down the California coast is where they're most popular. Uh, and But that's kind of been the problem is uh, it's not everywhere. And so my brother and I have created this uh, this model that we're going to duplicate where we can basically plug and play these machines into any clinic, any chiropractor, wellness clinic, uh, you know, MD, um, PT. And uh, we're also going to be setting up our own brick and mortars um, starting here in Scottsdale. And Dallas is one of the next places we're looking to come. So um, hopefully within the next six months, we will have a a halo wellness in in dallas is it diff different from the cryo side of it you know cryo is big nowadays you know people reading i've never i haven't done it yet but i've heard about it and getting in there is it have you done the cryo and seen you know the difference between that and what you guys are doing yeah um and so the cryo is that you know you you, it, you submerge your whole whole body in there and uh you know gets head to toe pretty, pretty much what we do is more, it's delivered more like an ultrasound with yeah. a little bit of gel on the skin and you have a wand and that produces a frequency. Um, so we can target the knee, we can target the neck, we can target, you know, shoulder, back, hip, whatever. And, uh, but we also have systemic protocols where if you look in acupuncture books or, or look at Chinese medicine, you know, we have meridians and, and energy points and energy um, pathways all the way through the body. And so we have a number of acupuncture act slash acupressure uh, protocols all through the ear. You can actually treat, you know, you can treat a liver, you can treat a, uh, you know, kidney, you can treat your brain, you can all through your ear. And um, it's kind of wild, but Chinese, Chinese medicine has had it all mapped out for, for years. And uh, so we can do systemic protocols that go all the way through your hands, hit all the reflexology points in your hands, your feet, up and down your spine, through your teeth. Uh, we help people with dental issues, uh, digestion issues, traumatic brain injuries, um, you know, me mental fog. Um, we've even helped some people with, uh, like, say, long COVID, um, where they're, they're having trouble breathing. Um, the, the treatments are amazing for clearing up your chest and uh, just helping your body detoxify and bring in nutrients and uh, produce healthier cells. And that's, that's really the basis of it is it's a cellular therapy. It's getting your cells to get rid of the bad stuff, bring in the good stuff at, at hyper speed and, uh, and charge up those cells to, to get their mitochondria going, the ATP production so that they can rebuild themselves and, healthier cells is a uh, healthier you have you been out talking with you know, with all the you know the trainers i know they have a big get together usually right before in the in the off season where they get together have you guys been out to those to talk to them to show them the treatments because you know those are trainers are always looking for things to get guys back on the field faster right and, yeah and uh, have you been out there yeah. to talk to them i know you said you haven't been able to get in the clubhouses late in the last few years but have you been have they anybody come to you with that as far as a trainer saying hey we want to send the guys yeah, um, we've had a number of uh, agents send guys to us. Um, my brother and I, we've actually gone down to the Diamondbacks facility and helped them with the with their machines, um, just giving them some protocols. So there are a couple of, of uh, teams that, that use these. The Reinsdorfs actually bought these machines for um, the Bulls and the White Sox back in the late 90s. Um, I actually just had a story that I had been telling um, saying that Jordan got, got healed by one of these. He had a groin pull and uh, he came back super fast from, from the uh, IR or the DL or I don't know, whatever they call it now. Um, and uh, so I was actually talking to John Reinsdorf and uh, he's a, he verified the story. He's like, yeah, we, he got treated and, and he came back super fast from this groin injury and, so anyways, the White Sox and the Bulls still use them on their players and the Diamondbacks. And there's a couple of hockey teams, I think. But um, so there's teams that, that do use them. Um, the training on these devices has really been what's what's been lacking. And that's where my brother and I are. are we're putting together a, <clears throat> a whole training system, um, videos, a whole video catalog so that, uh, you know, when somebody buys a device, they can just go back and watch the videos and, and learn how to use them as opposed to in the past, they've been sold devices. 
maybe they weren't trained well enough and or maybe whoever got trained now gets a job somewhere else and now you got this device that's amazing but nobody knows how to use it um they're kind of like sniper rifles where you need a well-trained sniper to to you know shoot what you want to shoot for long distance um and uh so it's that that's what we're working on on really you know making better in this industry and so that these things can be everywhere and treating guys all over the place because it, it really is special i mean it's we have guys that go get prp or stem cells or exosomes or and and it'll work for a little bit and but they'll come back and you know they'll say you know i got stem cells yeah it felt good for about three weeks but the pains back didn't really last well we go ahead and treat them three four five times and they're out walking around you know no pain you know flexibility is back uh, range of motion is back uh, they're playing on it again and so in a lot of cases where where biologics that um you can have a lot of you have a lot of problems you know that you run into with biologics it's it's you know it's biologics it's bio tissue and sometimes it's not yours um and so you can deal with infection and all this stuff you get biologics stem cell like uh reactions with non it's all non-invasive it's drug free it's a little tiny bit of electromagnetic stimulation and um and in fact the machines read your body before they treat you and that's part of the magic is they uh, the inventor actually created the EKG, the EMG, uh, the EEG, as well as the polygraph test, which are all frequency seeking or frequency diagnosing uh, devices. And he's credited with our missile guidance ship technologies, uh, which are frequency seeking and not heat seeking missiles anymore. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff, pretty amazing uh, technology in these in these little boxes. And uh, it's just it's so much fun to work with them and, and we get high fives and hugs every day just you know people that can't believe the the relief they're getting out of uh you know just a couple of sessions that, that are non-invasive yeah because people are flying all over the world you know just for you know so they, they can't find the, the help here they're going you know just for these third world countries getting these <laughs> you know stem cells and everything else flying all over the place trying to figure out right everybody's always trying to fountain of youth right yeah. with all this stuff that to yeah. help out and it's you know the 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 less invasive stuff you can get, the better, because it's the last thing an athlete wants is any any sort of cut on type <laughs> type right. uh, approach to anything. So that's it just some teams that get in our heads as far as, wait, I got to have surgery on what now? And that's and that's the thing. And that's you, you just head down that road, right? That yep. we talk about that. You were you know, you talked about with Shane, those guys with getting hurt. And here we go. We just start that. It's a slippery slope once you get gone with it. So, I mean, it seems to be. You know, the, the, the thing, we're always looking for the best thing. And, the, and these treatments, are they long? Or, you know, sometimes these can be drawn out of these short processes of how this is done or what? They, they pretty much are anywhere from 20 minutes to a 40-minute session. Um, you know, if we're treating one knee, we can get that done in about 20 minutes. Uh, generally, musculoskeletal issues take three to six sessions. So um, we have you come back three, four, five times, six times. and um, But generally, after like the second, third time, I mean, we see everything from, you know, 70 to 100% of your pain gone, you know, uh, in two, three <laughs> sessions a lot of times. Yep. And so, um, yeah, it's it's really pretty quick, and there's no downtime. There's no risk. There's no risk of infection. There's no risk of, you know, inflammation or of the, the procedure going wrong or being hurt by the, by the machines um it's it's really one of the most effective and safest modalities that there is and the cool thing is you know when i was hurt i got to go try everything i mean you remember when we were in japan together i was hurt then too in 09 and so i was i was literally going up and down japan looking for what the japanese had um and tried everything from the you know electro needling that they did where they put the little jumper cables on the on yep. the needles <laughs> on the acupuncture and, needles and, yeah and uh and i mean i just tried so many different modalities lasers and stim units and hivamats and you know uh, pemf and you name it um i got to try it and literally there's there's nothing in a in your average clubhouse uh that even comes close to the soft tissue regeneration that these things produce it's and, amazing uh, what they do the acupuncture that's when i fell in love with acupuncture being in japan of of uh you know of, of you know a muscle or something you had a knot in it and putting the needle right in the knot and just feeling that it just it just disperse and being able to be out and and do yeah. stuff right because you, as an athlete we don't we want to get back as fast as we can right we hate 
sitting around, right? We need to be doing, we need to be doing things moving. And if we can't, we, we go stir crazy. We're, we're creatures yeah. of habit. So if, if, if it gets us out of our habit, what we're doing, oh goodness. And we need, and you're right. You said you're trying to find any way to help yourself. Anything, going on. Yeah, any, what do you got? Oh you know, God. you're eating, you know, you know, these mushrooms or some, here's a frog, eat this frog, you know, anything at that Whatever. point. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. It, if somebody said Mike Tyson's in town, he said he'd hit you in the back for free and it'll help. Uh, I, I probably would have let him. Yeah. And that's what people don't realize that, that we're any, any way we can to get back on the field, right? We don't want to, we don't want to miss anything. It's, and it, no. it's, it's tough, you know, yeah. even, but that stuff, you're right. That Oriental medicine, they have the, uh, the cupping part of it, the acupuncture. I still do that stuff here. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, people, what is that? So what is it? It's just, you don't think it works because, but they're so far ahead of, of this, of this of these of these procedures and process that we're trying to catch up and that's what we want and that's yeah. why you know being over there helped to understand that what our bodies went through and how they were able to 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 help it you know and that that's the beauty of it like you said you learned and now it's taking you to to this yeah uh eastern culture has given us <clears throat> such amazing stuff you know everything from sushi to to yoga to acupuncture to you know just healthy ways of life and um you know we give them mcdonald's you know it, it doesn't seem like a fair trade but i, I sure i'm glad we got this going you know because <laughs> they, they 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 do know a whole lot more over there than and we're just catching up over here with our western medicine so um you know anytime we can avoid surgery and, and stay away from the pharmaceuticals the pills and stuff um you know especially as athletes we're, we're always looking for something that's that's going to give us that edge get us back on the field and uh, so that's uh, that's why I'm excited to share this with with our members and, and with the, you know, the sports family in general and uh, just show these guys how they can stay healthy, you know, get healthy and um, and just avoid the things that that are going to keep you off the field and that might be you know detrimental to your body. Yeah, you said they gave us fast healing. We gave them fast food. Right. So yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, America. Appreciate you. That's what we're good for, right? That's here, here. Here it is. So that's that's what we end up doing. You know, but it tastes good. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> right. They're so, they're all we're they're skinny. We're over here. We're just we're just plumping up here. We'll we'll, we'll repay <laughs> repay the favor for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Hey, <laughs> seems fair. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank. Yeah. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome for the yeah. fast food. You know they do. I remember the Mega Mac or something, the double Big Mac. It was huge. They had those things. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just got it just for the simple fact of getting it and everything else. So, uh, Well, you, I mean, maybe that's Otani's secret. Maybe, maybe. You know, maybe he just eats a lot of McDonald's. I, it could be. I mean, I always thought it was iced coffee and cigarettes when we were over there, right? That's all they... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like it's going out of off the shelves tomorrow, man. They just... Holy moly! That's the, that's the best part. I missed. I missed. Missed seeing that and then all the iced coffee flavors and everything else. So those um, guys would get done. I I remember like my second day there, I was just blown away. Like they got done just running the hardest wind sprints. I mean, twenty, you know, sixty yard sprints, and these guys are still breathing hard. They walk up to the cigarette table that's right in front, you know first first thing right there in the clubhouse or in the, in the uh, dugout sometimes. They just go up and, and light up a heater. I mean, they're still breathing hard, and they can't wait to get to that heater. Yeah, the fifth inning smoke break, right? The fifth inning smoke break, yeah. Remember those? Yeah. I remember the best way to clear out the clubhouse was if you smoked a cigar. They did not like that. They'd run right out of there. Is that right? Yeah, they did not like the cigar part of it, so that's how they would clear it out. But I do, you know, the fifth inning, game stops. And I remember sitting there going, Where's everybody? What's going on? <laughs> they're on the back. <laughs> they're on the back smoking. The umpires are all back there getting their, getting their heaters and everything else. So, it, <laughs> so I, I would dip. You know, I, yeah. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I chewed tobacco while I played, and, and they didn't like me to, to spit on the floor. And so, I, you know, in Japan, I had to have my little spit cup. Yeah. You know, in the uh, in the clubhouse or in the dugout before, uh, you know, in between the innings. So if I had a dip in while I was pitching, you know, I had a little little cup in the corner of the of the dugout. And, because uh, if I spit on the floor, I, you know, I was an animal. Yeah, yeah, they did not like that. Mm. It, I was, I was reading up. I forgot you were talking about this angel. You gave her up, or gave it up when you went overseas. Why did you give her up? Why did you give Angel up? And Angel was Cam's seven foot anaconda. Was it a boa or was it an uh, Colombian red tail boa constrictor? Okay, yeah. Constrictor. Okay, that he brought into the yeah. clubhouse one day and left it in the, in the laundry basket. 
it with with <laughs> some mice for a road trip or something? What? <laughs> yeah, I brought her in in a pillowcase, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I think Soriano wanted to see her eat, and so I, I bought a rat and brought her in brought the rat in put it in the, one of the big bins and uh i think guys were taking bets on on how long the, the rat would last uh, but she was she was awesome man you know i i had that snake since uh she was a foot long and twice the width of a pencil you know she's just a little thing about that big and when i got rid of her uh she was fully grown about eight feet long and she was bigger than a softball at her thickest point and uh but she loved to be held and she's just a i don't know if she was cool man i, I had to get rid of her because i went to japan gave her to a good family uh who also owned snakes in um in dallas in fact the family used to call themselves the cam's snake pit oh they yeah fly a little okay. banner over the over the side there um so that i got to know them from sitting at sitting, sitting with them at uh you know banquets and whatnot and just a real nice family so they, they took really good care of her um, I'm pretty sure she's probably passed now. She was about 10 when I got rid of her, and it's been a little over 10 years, and they only lived to about 20, 25. So I, w I would be surprised if she was still around, but she was a cool snake. Did you get another one? Are you going to get one for your daughter? Let's see if no, the girls my, see if my wife like says no snakes. Uh, I got a crested gecko. That's all I'm, all I'm allowed to have now. A cre what is a crested gecko? It's about that big. Uh, it's a cool looking gecko. Like those geckos that lick their eyeballs and stuff. <laughs> cool little thing. <laughs> but no more snakes then no more snakes no <sighs> i never touched that snake i was i'm not a snake person at all but i just remember her yeah. being in being in the clubhouse and everything else so it'll be interesting to see if she is still around uh you get back out yeah. here and see if to see if, she, if she's still around and uh I should reach out to them and see. Yeah. yeah even the kids when we go to my daughter's elementary school and they have the you know the, the pet farm they have the snakes and nah nope not a snake nope. fan. No, not a snake fan. Never, never would be. It's just, but it's funny that you know guys have different stuff that they kept around. What made you get a snake? I, I don't like snakes. What? Oh, let's just get a snake. Uh, you know, I, my brother and I, growing up, we always were running up and down the hills catching lizards and snakes and and bringing them home and and you know we'd bring them home for a week and then they wouldn't eat and then we'd let them go. But uh, just kind of always loved wild animals and catching what I could and then. Uh, I think it was it, yeah it was my ex, my girlfriend at the time um my sophomore year of college she knew i i liked lizards and snakes and for my birthday she just decided to buy me a colombian red tail boa constrictor i don't know if she knew how big it if she knew how big it would get but i mean it, <laughs> it, it, it got big um but she was you know she was a great conversation starter. That's that's for sure. Great icebreaker. I'd, I'd throw her around my neck and go take a walk. Uh, I used to live down in like Venice Beach area, and you know, throw the snake on my neck, go take a walk down Venice Beach boardwalk, and people come up and you know want to talk and and uh, pet her and stuff. And um, so yeah, she's she's just just cool. You know, just cool, just chill. That's it. That's what you need, right? That's all it is. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting that conversation started. She was perfect for that. So. Yeah, but you might have to you might have to adopt the mascot now for the for the association. That'll be it. It can be the snakes or something. You can have some sort of a a, <laughs> a, a sticker or whatnot you can pass around. Um, so so how can people reach out to you and the organization? Is there you know website um the the social media? I know you're talking about it. I, I, you know following you on I think it was Instagram. Is it coming mm -hmm. up? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and guy. How can people reach out? Just not even baseball. I mean baseball for that. Even for your. Uh, for the holistic medicine as well how can they reach out and find and find you with all that yeah the uh so the association uh apbpa.org association professional ball players of america uh you can find us on facebook or instagram uh, i don't believe we have a twitter right now um but uh yeah apbpa.org and so go to the website check us out we've got you know history Check out the uh, the list of board members. Not, you know, I showed you all these uh, really cool relics of, of guys, you know, dues cards from 1927 and all. Um, you should, I mean, check out the the, the list of boards, uh, board of directors. Um, I mean, it's everybody from, you know, Mickey Mantle to uh, Hank Aaron to Ken Griffey Jr. to you know, Oral Hershiser, Nolan Ryan. I mean, it's it's the who's who Mount Rushmore of uh, 
of Major League Baseball that have served as board members. And um, so it's, it's an absolute honor for me to be in the position that I am now. Um, you know, I, I definitely did not jockey for the, uh, for the position. Um, it just, I really kind of honestly fell into it. Um, and, uh, trying to, you know, working on, on just putting together the best, most skilled board to get things done. And, um, so we're, we're on a good trajectory now, but, um, yeah, it was kind of a wild ride getting, coming into this position, but, um, I'm sure. I'm sure it was getting yeah. to that point. And you're uh, the holistic medicine. Is that link available on the ABP PA website, or is that a different website for that? No, um, we're actually. So that's another thing we're working on is a uh, kind of a, a back end business portal for guys to uh, to promote their businesses, uh, our members, um, and guys to you know help support each other's businesses and whatnot. But uh, for right now, you can head to Halo. Hell, I'm sorry, that's my old one. Uh, Halo Wellness, H A L O E, my last name, Low, H A L O E, uh, wellness.com. Gotcha. Perfect. I meant to check this stuff out. I might have to come out and see you play some golf and, and do all that good stuff and everything else. So, man, uh, we'd love to. Have, we'll definitely put some golf together. You make it out here. Oh, absolutely. I know you come back here um, doing stuff as well with, uh, with the military stuff that we do, that, you know, the charity stuff. So, We'll yeah. definitely have to be in touch, man. But I appreciate you coming on here talking about this stuff today and you know and how we can how we can help out, not just baseball Betcha, players. Thanks for having me on, brother. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, I'll be in touch and we'll uh, you know, have to revisit this in a few, see how it's going, see how uh, the membership's going and anything else that we can do. We, you know, we're always helping out. So, man, I appreciate it, Cam, and uh, you know, good luck with that. And let me appreciate know any other you help you need with it, man. So it was good talking to you. And like I said, we'll uh, we'll we'll catch up again. Right on, Mitch. All right, thanks, Cam. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Thank you.